G'day folks, I'm Mick from Ironman 4x4. We're just about done with our Ironman 4x4 bush truck build and during that time we've also decided to give it a, a nickname. It's now the Ironman Iron Van, which rhymes, which is great. The other thing that's happened is many of you that have been following our build video have also posed a very valid question. Why we specifically chose the Hilux and not any other four-wheel drive vehicle? A good question and we'll answer that in a separate video. So we have fitted all the accessories to the vehicle. The only thing left to fit is the suspension. Now that sequence of events is very specific. We like to fit all the gear to the vehicle because as you're fitting gear to the vehicle, you're losing ride height, it's getting weight on it. And when we get to this stage where we've fitted everything to the vehicle that we're going to, we can now accurately determine how much ride height we've lost and what suspension we're going to put in to get that ride height back and give us that suspension lift that we need. Our Ironman Iron Van has got a typical suspension setup of the current crop of dual cab 4x4 pickups. Um, at the rear of the vehicle we have a solid axle which is suspended and located by the leaf spring and controlling the leaf spring is the shock absorber. Bear in mind that on suspension systems two components, springs, shock absorbers. Shock absorbers are a bit of a misnomer, they don't absorb shock. The spring carries the load of the vehicle, determines the ride height and also absorbs road shock undulations in the road. The function of the shock absorber is merely to control the movement or the oscillation of the spring. The better you control that movement, the smoother and more comfortable your ride is. Moving to the front of the vehicle, we have an independent system, which again is typical of just about every four-wheel drive on the market today. Independent meaning that each wheel operates independently as opposed to the solid axle on the rear where the wheels are actually linked to each other directly. And what we have here is we have an upper and a lower control arm that locates the wheel and also controls the movement of the uh, wheel up and down. Suspended on a coil spring that is mounted over a shock absorber, we call this a coil over strut system. So that's carrying your weight, that's controlling the movement, this is holding the wheel in place and there are certainly extremities as far as the movement up and down is concerned, which we'll have a look at during the fitment. One of the things we often come across when we get vehicles into work on is people that use spacers as a cheap uh, alternative to fitting a proper suspension kit to get some lift out of the vehicle. It's basically a spacer that fits on top of the strut, gives you a bit of lift in front, but there are some really seriously inherent dangers in using the system, especially if you're a serious off-roader. Um, they're serious enough that we thought we'd put a separate video together to show you um, the do's and don'ts as far as that's concerned. And with that, let's get the suspension fitted. We're done fitting the upgraded suspension kit to our Ironman 4x4 bush truck. What we found after fitting all of the accessories to the vehicle is that we lost a bit of ride out on the front and the rear of the vehicle. This is to be expected with all the weight that we've added onto the vehicle. 
When the vehicle rolled in here, we measured the ride heights on the front from the bottom of the rim to the guard at 740 millimeters and on the rear of the vehicle, 800 millimeters. After all of the accessories were fitted, we found we lost 10 mils on the front and about 30 mils on the rear of the vehicle in ride height. But that gave us the opportunity to properly spec what suspension we were gonna fit in to compensate for that slight loss in ride height, as well as induce a good 40 millimeters of lift over and above standard. And that's about a nominal lift for this vehicle. It's a safe lift and it won't compromise the reliability of any of the running gear of the vehicle. So after the suspension was fitted, we have ended up with around 800 mils on the front of the vehicle and about 865 on the rear of the vehicle. It's a bit tall in front, but the front springs are going to settle by about 10 millimeters, which will give us 20 mils on the wheel. And we should end up with a good 40 millimeters front and rear as a lift, which is spot on. All that's left now is to get the vehicle to the sign writers. They're going to be putting the Ironman branding all over the vehicle and then she's ready to hit the trail.